Hey guys, it's JC. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking about boundaries. And I want to be very specific with this word because let me just say right from the start, I am not a fan of diet culture. I'm not. Gave that up years and years and years ago. I don't believe that it is a mentally healthy way to live. I think the diet culture has done a lot of damage, caused a lot of eating disorder, eating disorders in our in women, millions of women, young girls, I, I think that kind of restrictive, starve yourself mentality is not the direction we're gonna go. So I want to be careful from the start when I say boundaries. I'm talking about something totally different. But here's the reason I think we need to talk about it. I think um, there's such a backlash to the diet culture right now. If you've seen much online and looked into articles and seen blog posts and stuff, Everyone's pushing so hard back against all those years of dieting that messed us up, understandably so. But I'm seeing a swing all the way to no rules at all. That's the only way to have a healthy relationship with food. Take away all these rules that we've given ourselves over the years. Take them away. Just give yourself the freedom to say all food is good and you can eat whatever you need to and whatever you're craving. Well, I understand the desire to set us free from the shackles of dieting. And while I agree that we need to be set free from that, let's look in the scriptures. I, I think the Lord would find a place of balance somewhere in between the two extremes, not diet culture, but not swinging all the way over here to say, just eat whatever you want. That's the only way to heal. Just accept it. Just, just eat. Um, I, I think he'd land in the middle. And I'm going to show you some scriptures why I believe that. Guys, I had some fun with scriptures this week. I, I, if you have ever wondered um, what I use to, to look at different translations of scripture, this time it was Bible Gateway. Just go on online and find Bible Gateway and you can type in a verse and look at all kinds of different translations or ways to read that verse. So if you want to see if there's scriptural evidence that boundaries, and I'll explain what I mean by that by the end of this video, are a good thing. Let's listen to what the Lord says about this in scripture. And yes, it is found in scripture. The one, um, the two I use most often, and I, I almost wanted to skip them because I use them so much, but Galatians 5, 23 says that temperance is a fruit of the spirit, which is another word for self-control. We're told right there by Paul, that whole chapter of Galatians 5, that you should walk in the spirit and have an ability to have self-control. That's a gift of the spirit. So obviously, boundaries and ability to control are food choices. That's, that's a huge one. The other one I use a lot is 2 Timothy 1, verse 7. The Lord hasn't given us the spirit of fear. The King James says, but of power, he's given us the spirit of power and of love and of sound mind. If you don't look at other translations, that one may not seem to fit food. But listen to this from the NIV. Um, it says the spirit of power and love and self-discipline. Self-discipline. Hmm, maybe he believes in boundaries. <laughs> or the ESV. So I keep to take them on and off because they glare. I'm sorry. I haven't figured out how to not have them glare. So if that annoys you, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the ESV of 2 Timothy 1.7, it uses the word self-control, self-discipline. He didn't give us a spirit of fear, but he taught us through his spirit to be self-disciplined, self-controlled. There, there should be a balance in between those two. Let's have some more fun in scripture. One of another one that in the King James, and I use the King James because my denomination um, settles there, it's Titus 2. 11 and 12, which does not, again, seem like it has anything to do with eating or binging or any of this. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly. And you think, okay, soberly, that kind of has an element of control to it, godly, but they're kind of vague, right? But if you go to the ESV, for the grace of God has appeared, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, godly lives. The message even says in this same verse in Titus, we're being shown how to turn our backs on a godless, indulgent life. And that's one of my concerns with this swing all the way to this side is it's self-indulgence. If I want donuts, I'm going to eat half the box because I'm giving up the diet culture. I'm giving up food rules. But I mean, really, 
we know we're a temple. Our body is a temple. And, and there is a way God has designed for us to care for it so it will feel good, so it will function right. And so we're living an indulgent life isn't the best way to show a God-honoring life where we respect our temple that we live in, right? There are boundaries that I believe he would have us put in place through the gift of spirit-led self-control, self-discipline, that will find help us find a place that doesn't feel like restrictive dieting. It doesn't feel like holding our breath. It, it's got to have a different tone to it where we see it in a new light. And again, we'll go there before I'm done. Um, this is funny. This is so funny. Proverbs 25, guys, if you don't look at any of these, go look at Proverbs 25. Oh my gosh, I had so much fun in the translations. Proverbs 25, verse 16 in the King James says, Hast thou found honey? Eat so much as is, eat so much as is sufficient for thee, lest thou be filled therewith and vomit it. <laughs> don't binge on honey. There's a verse in the Bible that says don't binge on honey. <laughs> um, the the New International Version, the NIV says, if you find honey, eat just enough. Too much of it, and you will vomit. <laughs> Sorry. There's there's very applicable verses for what we're doing in this channel. Okay, my favorite though is the message because Eugene Peterson in his translation gives himself a little more freedom to translate the Greek. <laughs> he said, when you're given a box of candy, don't gulp it down. Eat too much chocolate and you'll make yourself sick. <laughs> I mean, we know this, right? But I did not remember those verses were there. And so it was kind of funny going through those and being like, yep, done that lots of times done that lots of times. So indulgent eating, binge eating, no, that is not the way of God. There are some boundaries that we can put in place. In fact, this, this was one of my favorites. In that same chapter in Proverbs 25, if you go to um, verse 28, um, the King James says it, it a little different. He that hath no rule over his spirit is like a city that's broken down without walls. But I like some of the other translations better for this word, verse in terms of forming a word picture for us to think about in terms of food boundaries, where we, where, what happens when we don't have them in place. The New Living Translation um, translates Proverbs 25, 28. A person without self-control is like a city with broken down walls. A person without self-control. The message says a person without self-control is like a house with its doors and windows knocked out. Just picture that for a minute. What would your house look and feel like with all the doors and windows completely gone and no protection? Things can come in and out that you don't want there. Um, danger or freezing temperatures or all kinds of things. That your house would not be able to control and have um, a comfortable way of living, right? So our body without self-control it's like throwing open the doors and windows and all kinds of harmful things can happen when we are eating out of control. We know that, right? But can you see where it is all over the place scripturally? And, and I've used other scriptures in other videos. You know, these aren't the only ones. You can check out some of my links below. I'll put on one, some of the videos that I've done in the same realm if you want to look at it. But let's talk specifically as we finish about boundaries and what that means. I'm going to use this cute little book. I Deserve a Donut, and Other Lies That Make You Eat by Barb Raveling, who is wonderful, wonderful. She has several books in this realm, but I'll link this one below if you want to check it out. But she has an appendix specifically on boundaries because she talks about boundaries throughout her, this book on what it's like to set those. But listen, I'm going to read quite a bit, but hang with me. This is so good. She says, in the past, it never occurred to me to restrict my eating when I wasn't on a diet. On the contrary, non-diet life was my opportunity to live it up, to eat what I wanted, when I wanted, without regard for consequences. It took me a while to figure out that that was a bad way to live life. That life was actually, oh, that life was actually better when I ate with control. Then listen to what she says. I don't know why it took so long. After all, I exercised control in other areas of my life. I was faithful to my husband pay off my credit card each month. Well, most of us try to do that, right? I didn't say every single little thing that popped into my mind. Think about it. We are able to exercise great control when we want to. Um, I talk about this in my faith-based eating class. 
I, I don't just go out the door and say, I'm going to drive 100 miles per hour because I want to. I know I need to limit that. And I just do. I don't fail again and again and again. I limit my driving to keep the law for the most part. <laughs> Too much honesty in this video. But same thing, like she said, faithful to my husband. I adore that man and I want to keep him around. So I set very firm boundaries. I do not go out with other men. Just don't. I have not broke that boundary once in 32 years. Oh, the self-control I have. <laughs> and yet I've broken food boundaries a billion times, right? So you show yourself, you think, wait a second, I have shown the ability to exercise great self-control when I want to. When I value that thing. And, or even in the driving example, or in the credit card example, I, I could go and run up 10 credit cards and just get every credit card. And maybe some of you have, or I, I've had a few years of debt. I mean, I'm not saying we've been perfect, but we set boundaries in places that we know where it will get out of control will have consequences. And so we do it naturally. We show great self-control. Food, I think sometimes we just give ourselves permission to eat whatever we want, whenever we want, just because we want to. And not realizing that there are going to be huge consequences, just like in the other examples. But we just either go in denial about them or rationalize about them or don't blame some of those effects on the food. There's just reasons to have these boundaries in place. So let me continue. Um, she says, I want to figure out, let's see. According to freedictionary.com, she says, a boundary is something that indicates a border or a limit. A playground fence is an example of a boundary. It limits where the kids can play, but that's not all it does. It also cramps their style. Those little kids would love to run out in the street and look at all those fun, noisy cars, but the fence holds them in and says, no kids, you can't play in the street. That doesn't mean the fence is bad. You catching this? On the contrary, the fence makes their lives better because it protects them from harm. The same is true for us. Lifelong boundaries in the area of food make our lives better because they keep us safe. Yes, they cramp our style, but you know what? Our style needs to be cramped. We're talking about the flesh here, the natural man that has very out of control, especially for some of us. If you're an addict like me, you understand this. My flesh could go ham with food and I could end up in a very, very, very bad place. In fact, I had enough binges to prove that. I need my style to be cramped. <laughs> I need fences because my flesh is not trustworthy. It has shown that time and time again. So boundaries are not diet culture. They're not restricting and limiting. And we've got to rage against that diet culture. Boundaries from the Lord, spirit led boundaries, keep me safe from the ravages of my flesh and how my own desires, my own corrupt desires to please the flesh would destroy me. It's hard to admit that, that your own desires, but how many of us have shown that? We'll eat and eat and eat far beyond where our body feels good. We will punish our body where we feel awful. Why do we do that to ourselves? That flesh has an appetite and it needs boundaries to be reined in, spirit-led boundaries, and then the gift of self-control through the spirit to keep those boundaries. Okay, let me finish. She says, lifelong boundaries in the area of, oh, I already read the part. Um... Our style needs to be cramped because there are consequences to eating what we want when we want. Here are just a few of them. Clothes that don't fit, discomfort, diabetes, sore joints, weight gain, depression, heart disease, hopelessness, and early death. And I would even add separating us from the Lord. It, it just blocks us from our ability to stay close to him when we are numb with food. Um, and it's a God becomes a God in our life and we don't reach for the true deliverer because we're reaching for a false deliverer. She says, these are just a few of the enemies that lurk outside the fence of our boundaries waiting to destroy us. So she gives example of some boundaries, um, for her are just examples. She, she talks about what hers are and uses an example of eating to your full and stopping when you're full, not letting yourself go past that point. Um, and, and not eating when you're not hungry. Not eating for boredom or for stress or for anxiety. That's a huge boundary. And that would take a while to get to a place where the spirit is strong enough and powerful enough in your life that if you've been an emotional eater, you're learning through Christ to put off that ability and set a boundary. 
Um, she also uses a boundary of some people setting a certain number of meals and snacks or whatever um, fits your situation. I've talked many times about my own boundary. Right now, it has been for almost 20 years, no white flour and no white sugar. Um, for the first 10 years, I was militant about it. And I've said that before because I didn't want the depression it was causing. And my depression was gone and I wanted to keep it gone. So I was militant. I've learned now, I, I'm tr testing new boundaries, but I don't have very much wiggle room. I have a tiny bit. You can eat a little bit of dark chocolate, a little bit of honey. But I've tried straying a little bit more than that for my boundaries. And I, it, it does not keep me in this wonderful place that I've learned to live. Place of balance and energy and freedom and clarity and joy. I just love it. And so I'm not going to push my boundaries. Um, what was the other one that I was thinking about? Oh, one of my recent ones that wasn't, um, in my twenties and thirties, I wasn't a big deal, but I don't do well. I don't sleep well. If I eat late at night, I don't feel well. So for the most part, I'm not perfect with this and I'm okay with that. For the most part, I try to after dinner, be done eating just because my body's happier. It shows respect. God honors this gift God gave me. That's what it's asking for. And so I'm trying to honor that and just say, okay, yeah, we can be done. Eating in front of the TV is really fun. I know. But these boundaries are for my protection, not to restrict me and harm me, harm my mental health. Like a lot of the diet culture does that, that existed to get you into a mindset of being a size two and maybe you didn't even belong in a size two and you would punish your body to try to get there. That's not what we're talking about. We're just talking about simple boundaries where the Lord prompts you to know what would best work for your metabolism, for your genetics, your lifestyle, your own health issues, whether you have thyroid issues, gut issues, digestive issues, what are the boundaries he might put in place? If you have adrenal issues, your energy, um, another boundary, boundary may be caffeine. Caffeine, um, I, I don't, I don't not use it, but I'm careful with it because I don't, again, I, it wrecks my sleep. Even if I have it super early in the morning and then don't do any of the rest of the day, um, I, my sleep, something happens and I am up all night. My husband jokes. He's like, it's out of your body. This is all in your head. <laughs> like, but every time it does that. So sometimes I will use caffeine medicinally as, as a way to help with PMS or but I'm very careful and prayerful about it because it's kind of got a boundary for me. Can you see how this is individual and how it is totally prayerful, spirit led where the Lord helps you establish boundaries? Then that's radically different than the diet culture. That's not restrictive eating at all. It's coming close to him, partnering with him in your help, help and letting him say, here's the fence. And within the fence, you have a lot of room to play. I, I'm not really restrictive and tight with my diet and I have some room within the fence, but there are a few things that are pretty strict because I've learned that stepping a toe with, beyond them, I get sick, I get depressed, I get anxious, I get irritable. I have a terrible temper, temper when I eat sugar. I can snap at somebody and just, it's awful, it's awful. So I don't want to, I don't want to be in that place. So I respect the boundaries out of love for the Lord in helping me see how to live my best life. See how that's a good thing? So think about that for a while this week. Think about shifting from maybe if you're still stuck in trying to do diets or programs. And again, I'm not against all programs. He might lead you to a program for a while to get things settled. But if to move from a restrictive diet culture to not all the way to this side where it's full indulgence, but right here in the middle where there's some room to just eat like a normal, you know, have French fries or whatever isn't in your boundary, but also to know where your boundaries are. If your body's sugar addictive, it might be that. My daughter has a boundary of dairy. She didn't cross it. She feels terrible when she eats dairy. See what I mean? Very individual, very spirit led, and it can help us to find our happy place in a way that we can breathe and have peace with food. Hope that was helpful. Ask questions in the comments if you want. And then I'll see you next time.